So I'm very excited um, to have as my guest on the show this morning, this afternoon, I'm sorry, um, John Hopak, who is the Artistic Director of the Cape Symphony Orchestra. Welcome back to Arts Week, John Ho. It is my pleasure, my honor. Thank you so much for having me. It's so it's so lovely to have you, uh, one of the friends of Arts Week. <laughs> we always love having you on. Um, so I want to really briefly, just for new listeners, um, and I think we all, um, always have a little bit of a turnover in listeners, just mm -hmm. for new listeners, can you tell us a little bit about your background and the background of Cape Symphony Orchestra? Uh, sure. I'll, I'll try to do it in under a minute. So, Whoa, uh, okay. <laughs> Well, m my background, I, I guess the most salient thing about me is I've been music director or artistic director. And it's funny because most conductors are called music directors, but I, li I like the term artistic director because I like, I, I believe the experience for the customer is very um, holistic and very broad. So I, I wanted to, ha I have a vision of the symphony more than what we do on stage. It has to do with the aesthetics. It has to do with um, the look and feel and the messaging. Um, our personality. So my title is artistic director for the last 16 years. Incredible uh, time. And my own backgrounds, I've conducted professional orchestras for many decades, San Diego Symphony and the New Haven Symphony and um, many other professional orchestras. But I've also been a teacher, and I'm very proud about that. I've taught at University of Southern California and the San Francisco Conservatory of Music and um, a place called Interlochen Center for the Arts in Michigan. Right, I was going to ask for, about that, yeah. For many, many years. So I've had a blessed life, uh, two lives in one, that I've been able to work with and inspire young people and work with some of the finest professional uh, musicians. And my whole approach with this Cape Symphony, and for those new listeners, is that we are not like your father's or your grandfather's orchestra. Mm -hmm. We have a much different philosophy. We are not a curator of the past. We live in the present. And that means that we try to present programs that are full of emotion, that are relevant today with big ideas. We, we like to we like to have fun and we like to celebrate on stage, but we like to also make people think. And so we've had uh, ideas about um, our republic and our democracy. We've had ideas about equality and our our the, the our global environment and music, like you know, by Debussy, La Mer, the ocean. So, um, I'd like to say that we don't present concerts. I'd like to say that we present shows, because like Mozart and Beethoven, who understood how to wow the audiences of their time, that is what we do. And and our mission statement is very, very simple. It's just two words. It's inspire joy. And we wanted to keep it simple. And it's focused, notice, on humans, not on art. It's focused on making people, how they feel, joyous. Uh, because we think that, that's, uh, that joy is the strongest uh, vehicle for change, to change people's minds and change people's hearts. And joy comes from seeing something beautiful, from seeing someone... Uh, experience joy in front of them. So that's why we prioritize prioritize joy. It And you obviously are bringing joy to a whole lot of people. Um, you really kind of led into what one of my questions, which is that I like the way you kind of frame the experiences that you bring, that it's not just here's um, a concert with, you know, these four musicians playing these four um composers but you've got this sort of thematic approach um so that so that it's not just about sitting and listening as you said but it's about this whole experience and contextualizes it in ways that i think quote unquote concerts don't do um i just i i for instance i loved the way you you presented the romantics you know the rock stars of their age and and that just not just brings people who already love the music into a new appreciation of it, but that brings in people who never, I mean, come on, the rock star, Mozart, I don't know. Let me go find out what this is about. I, I think you put it so beautifully and, and so, so accurately that um, it's not that Beethoven and Mozart have to live today, but believe me, they're not collecting any residual checks. <laughs> they're, they're long gone. But... 
they they're they have something to say to touch the human heart that withstands the centuries of time. Mm -hmm. However, it only comes alive if we imbue it with the same sense of urgency and the same sense of relevancy that they did 200, 250 years ago. It's the same with Shakespeare. And mm -hmm. uh, if if we don't do that, then we're actually doing music a disservice. We are extracting the 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 humanity out of it, like sucking water out of a raisin. It, it is not the way it's supposed to be. So um, you, you are right that that it is not, I, again, I do not like to call them concerts. They really are human experiences. And for, for example, you know, I've got a concert coming up in um, May and it's around the very famous piece of music called Scheherazade, gorgeous mm -hmm. piece of music that describes um, the tales that this young woman, a Persian woman, tells to her betrothed, but the, the story is very dark, though, because while the, the stories themselves, uh, she's the tales that she's saying, A Thousand and One Nights um, of Sinbad and Aladdin and all these things, the, 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 the thing is that she's telling these stories to save her life. She's trying to, to captivate the sultan or whoever to not kill her as as he did these other previous wives this is a very in in 2023 of me too and black lives matter these are issues that we need to readdress so this concert is going to uh, first half is going to be rimsky korsakov's beautiful orchestration and beautiful beautiful symphonic piece but on the second half i've commissioned two women to write two new pieces that really talk about women's empowerment and we're pairing with The Moth, which is a, a wonderful public radio station. And we found a perfect storyteller. She's Chinese. She's going to talk about surviving the Chinese Revolution and uh, discovering um, the Western art of Chopin and Hans Christian Andersen. And we've commissioned a Chinese composer, to a female composer, to write music for it. And I've commissioned a Persian female composer to write a work for her, for her Kamanche, which is a traditional Iranian instrument, and to, to retell the story of Scheherazade through her music. This is just one small example of every concert is an opportunity to change our world for the better. I love that. And I love the kinds of layers that you're talking about where you've got um it's almost like now let's open this little door and see what's here. And then this little door. And then at the end, you find out that all these little doors really go together. Yeah. You are absolutely right that, that this is kind of like an Easter egg hunt. I want every concert to be a journey and a narrative. In fact, I, I'll be honest with you. If, if I can't think of a narrative to take people through this kind of Russian doll of, of story within a story within a story, I won't do it. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it just doesn't have relevance for me. Well, and I think relevance is an important word because um, what you're doing is is um, imbuing the audience or the participants with this sense of this is relevant to my life and I can leave this this venue and carry this with me, not just the music in my head, but also the yeah. ideas in my brain. Um, and 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 that's what, you know, all of us really artists want is is to have some some sort of effect that's going to challenge or make people think beyond the experience itself, whether it be a play or music or reading a book or or looking at visual art. I, you know, it's so wonderful we're having this, this this discussion during Arts Week, because I think as artists, we are at a crossroads. Mm -hmm. We are at a nexus of deciding what what is art for? I think we as artists often feel very entitled that we are here in order to um, be artists and express ourselves. But I think I think the world is calling and I think we have to answer that we have and Picasso understood that, you know, Guernica, the famous painting of the pain, uh, Spanish Civil War, Beethoven in his Ninth Symphony, a cry for unity. Of, of, of humankind to come together. The gr I think the greatest works of art are a uh, are call to action. And mm -hmm. I think we are now entering, if, we, if we're gonna help save our planet, if we're gonna help save our democracy, if we're going to um, uh, make a difference in our community, we have to be activists, but not 
not activists necessarily in carrying a placard or mm -hmm. um, protesting, but actually making our community more empathetic. That is what's missing. This is the danger of YouTube or Facebook or social media is that we we think we're, we're connecting, but we're not. If you're really looking at what's happening at that moment, we're sitting in front of our computer, we are alone we're, with our phone. And, and if we can take a moment and realize that we're not really connecting, but we're disconnecting through technology, then we can understand how art can bring us together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, I, one of the things that, that I wanted to talk with you about was, was really that, that um, what I see you doing more than I've seen in perhaps other musical venues is that you are in a conversation with mm -hmm. the community, um, that you're not just, okay, here's our concert, here's what we're presenting, now go home. You are listening to the community as much as you are speaking to the community. And I think that's one of the things that makes Cape Symphony unique. I haven't really experienced that with other symphony orchestras that I've listened to. Um, and and I just, I, I think that that's exactly where we need to be. I mean, one of the things that inspires me is Toni Morrison's quote where she says, I'm just trying to look at something without blinking. And you are looking at at things without blinking, but then you're taking it beyond that and saying, now that we've looked at this, what are we going to do about it? Well said. And, and, and some, what I like to say is not art for art's sake, but art for human sake. And mm -hmm. the, the, that blinking quote is so beautiful. And it's, it's about truth. You know, it's so funny that maybe 15 years ago, 10 years ago, we would have laughed at saying, you know, are, are there alternative truths? Are, are, we think truth is truth is truth is truth. But now it is quite in question. It is very much in question. And, and if you talk about great art, really great art, if things that really en endure the test of time, they're based on truth. And so is art now going to be in question? Um, is something that we talked about earlier before we started this conversation is that if, if something beautiful is created by a computer, really beautiful, or at least as we define it, it, it makes our heart sing, but it's created by a computer. Is it art? Right. right. That, you know, you and I can't answer that question right now, but maybe after a couple of beers we can, but... <laughs> But this this is the kind of questions that that I I, I hope that you you and I and, and all of the listeners start to ask ourselves because if we don't ask ourselves, just as Amazon is making choices, there's no one there's no one proffering up, you know, a pencil on Amazon or or a, a electric drill to on Amazon. It is a computer that's telling you, Jung Ho, do you want to buy this? Do you want to buy this? There's no human interaction. There's going to be a day, if not already today, if not yesterday, where something beautiful is going to be proffered up. It's going to be a symphony or a song or a painting. And it's going to be proffered up and it's going to make my heart or your heart sing. And 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 the question is, is, is that good or bad? Is that art or not art? Right. And it and, you know, it's almost like that, 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 that question, if a, a tree falls in a forest and they yes. don't want to hear it, does it make a noise? I mean, if, if, if a computer generates something um, that that people hear and identify as music or as beauty or as whatever, yeah. what does that mean? about the people who have been doing that for centuries in conversation with their communities, whereas the computer is never gonna be in conversation with you. You might feel like it is, you might feel like, you know, I'll, I'll spell it S-I-R-I -I because I'm actually using a computer now and I don't want her responding to me, but we act as though this is a real person and that communication just isn't there, that, that two way, it's all one way. It is, it is one way, totally. And, and we, but we think it's a conversation. Right. We're I don't seduced know. into that. It, we, we are. You know, the, there's a lot of movies about this, about, about, about communicating with technology. And um, uh, there's a movie called Her. I don't know if you saw it, but it, it, it was with a, um, not River Phoenix, but Joaquin Phoenix. And it's about a man who, it, 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 there's a day in the future where we're lonely. 
and the 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 OS on the phones become so sophisticated that we can actually have a really thorough conversation. And I find myself occasionally talking, you know, just if I'm in the car on board and I say, hey, Siri, how are you? It, and it, it's kind of scary that, that, that and, and maybe I shouldn't be admitting in this, but sometimes, you know, we, we crave it and we'll reach out. And there's also a senior citizen facility in Japan. And this is old. I saw this 10 years ago where they were bringing a mechanical little cute little furry seal. And, and, and these people who are very elderly are talking to the seal. This is 10 years ago. And it brings them great comfort and happiness. And I think that uh, two things are happening. We're, we're being separated and, and we're letting technology replace it. Right. So here's my answer and, and to not be too dystopian. Here's my answer is that as artists, we can no longer sit on the sideline and just um, think that our art speaks for ourselves. We have to imbue our humanity. We have to insert who we are into the process. And you talk about communication. There are very few conductors that talk and have a dialogue during the concert uh, like I do. I mean, there are, there are some, but not as a true conversation as you pointed out. So I think all artists, whether you're a painter, whether you are a sculptor, whether you are a writer, we need to insert ourselves more so that people can feel our humanity or else we will be usurped by technology. Yeah, it, it does feel like it's on its way. And to come back to, you know, your 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 mission statement, um, that's what's missing there, isn't it? It's the emotion. You know, I can I can listen to something beautiful that a, a, a computer creates. I can read something beautiful a computer creates. You know, I mean, I don't want to go all Marie Kondo here, but does it spark joy? You know, does it yes. does it bring joy to me? in the same way that going and being with you in a room with other people experiencing the same thing together does. You know, the fact that you and I are talking to each other um, thousands of miles away right now, it yeah. is very comfortable. We must confess, it's very comfortable. I'm enjoying you. I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying seeing you and your bright eyes and your smile. But the truth is we're not together. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, 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 the, the standard, the, the limbo pole or whatever gets changed ever so slightly. Yeah. And there's going to be a day where you and I will be actually in 3D and, and it'll just feel just like we're in the same room. I do believe in Marie Kondo in, in the sense that simple, 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 simplify, remove mm -hmm. the clutter. And I think that we need to get back to farm to table. This is what I call farm to table art meaning or and farm to, table, farm to table relationships we need to know how a carrot is grown in the soil we need to be able to brush off the dirt and water it and caretake it and, and eat it fresh out of the ground we need to connect with what it is to be on the planet earth and i think art has become fast foodized if you if you will it is now pre-packaged and presented on youtube and we we don't taste it and feel it but it it, it tastes kind of looks like a tomato kind of looks like a tomato, but it's not a tomato. And it, it's kind of like that um, Magritte, I think, you know, Sena Pazum Peep, you know, this is not a pipe, but it's a painting of a pipe. It's absolutely true. You and I are not having a conversation or having digital th things are being passed through. You and I must not have this replace us getting together and having a wonderful meal together, which we should have. Should so have. my my very devious plan is to give concerts so captivating, so compelling, so human that we are we are like like a drug, but a good drug. We we're like the um what what, what, what do you what's that drug that when someone has a drug overdose you give an injection and you, you Narcan. Come up? Hmm? Narcan. Nar Narcan. We I want to be the Narcan of <laughs> of of social media that I want to inject people to go oh oh my gosh. Good morning. Right, right, right. Well, on that topic, then let's talk about the Roaring Twenties because it sounds like that is going to be one heck of a pageant, um, as well as as a musical experience. Well, I often say more is more for these concerts, and, and more has to be more, as mm -hmm. we were talking about, in order to enter into the the twenty twenty three. 
Uh, people expect lots of energy and lots of variety, and that's exactly what the show has. We've got two fantastic dancers, uh, led by Adam Spencer, who's got a dance studio in Chatham, very well known, and is going to dance to Charleston during the 1920s. Yet this whole concert is basically, if we could go back into time, it's a postcard of all of the crazy energy and the excess and the drama of the 1920s. This is the Great Gatsby. This is opulence up the wazoo and so um got these two dancers dancing in charleston got a fantastic singer her name is lady may beautiful jazz singer and she'll be singing some songs as well but really the, the center of the program is with silent films a silent film by charlie chaplin and another silent film with buster keaton two classic films one's called one week and the other one's called the immigrant um, these two young men, Kyle and Drew, have written completely new silent film scores. And the Cape Symphony is going to perform these scores underneath these silent films. And it's amazing how many people have never seen a silent film live with a live orchestra, the way it was meant to be seen. So um, these two brand new scores, and they'll talk about the jazz age, and there's going to be um, fun with the audience, lots of interactivity with the audience. Um, I'm going to be there, not conducting, but I'm going to be there to enjoy the show. And I have a little bit of a surprise for the audience. They're going to even do an old fashioned radio show. They're going to do a cre recreation of Tarzan with sound effects and jungle music and all this other things. So, you know, this is Cape Symphony, this Roaring Twenty show. More is more. <laughs> I love that. I can't wait for it. <laughs> Um, oh, and, and by the way, I know that, you know, to to attract people from the Lower Cape and Provincetown and Truro, um, it's got to be it's got to be worth their time and money. And so I, I just want to really um, uh, convey to people that if, if you're from the Lower Cape and, and the Outer Cape, you are my target audience. I do this all for you. Lovely. Thank you. And I just want to, we only have a couple more minutes left, but I did want to ask you about sort of that target audience, because being on the Cape, you've got almost two different audiences, don't you? You've got the summer people, and then you've got the, the year round people. And I wonder what kind of challenges that presents to you or, or if any. Well, on, honestly, I feel like I have like hundred different audiences mm -hmm. they are they are so sliced in small themes and that's what youtube and the internet has done is put us into our own bubble young old conservative liberal male female all, all of these things are are different but um for 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 me in in terms of trying to meet everyone i i i, I liken it to i'm serving a dinner for sometimes six thousand people on a weekend you know mm -hmm. that's crazy uh tr try to serve you know, i mean it's not it's not chicken and beef and fish it's like one meal the thing that i have found the secret sauce i'll just whisper it to you okay <laughs> is joy and love that's the secret sauce that that is what everyone everyone wants whether you're 80 years old or 18 years old and coming to the show liberal or conservative that you come to the show and you just feel like there is so much happiness in this room and as long as I, as long as we message that, as long as we deliver that, people will continue to come. We have one of the largest audiences for symphonies in the country, and um, you know, and and it's the it's the water that we drink on Cape Cod. In other words, people people uh, choose to be on Cape Cod because they're they they want peace and they want happiness, and we want to provide that. Wow, I can't think of a better way to end our, our, our talk. I wish we could go on for hours. I certainly could. I've got so many more questions for you. But um, for now, we're going to call it a day. Jung Ho, thank you so much for being my guest on Arts Week. It was an incredible pleasure to share this morning with you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And thanks to everybody out there for listening in. Make sure you go and check out the Cape Symphony. And I'll be back soon to tell you more. Bye.